Welcome back to stop number five on the championship tour. This is Kanoa Igarashi up against the defending champion Felipe Toledo. Quarter final number one. Racing down the inside track here, Barinha, a venue change, inspired venue change. <laughs> Air reverse on the inside there from Igo Rashi. Brad Bricknell here alongside a former winner here in Brazil and 88 world champion Barton Lynch. It's a pleasure and honor to have you in the booth with us. Likewise, mate, and what great wave selection from Kanoa Igarashi. Got that first turn in, was beautiful, into a tube ride. Not deep, but definitely got a little bit of cover as we... Oh, this is a good angle. Straight up, snaps out of the first one. Let's see how deep he gets from this angle. Cover up, cover up, not really in it at all from that angle. The side-on angle looked a lot deeper. Beautiful little spin out of the top two. Great starting ride to complete. We've got a little start to this matchup. 30-minute uh, uh, quarterfinals. And here goes uh, Felipe Toledo on the outside, Whoa! dragging the anchor for the opening tube ride for Felipe. What? Overcomes Slater in the super here today, overcomes that section on the inside. This is going to be an incredible battle. I can't wait to call it Igarashi. Quick one, in and out. What a quarterfinal. Thanks for watching on Fox Sports. You've joined us just in time for quarterfinal action. Felipe Toledo and Kanoa Igarashi. Brad Bricklin here alongside Barton Lynch for the call. Uh, we had fireworks from the first few minutes. Wow, the, the waves look like that, that tide pulling out is starting to have an impact. Great time to join us because the surfing in that opening exchange was electric. Both very similar types of surfers. And if you look at surfing and you kind of put it into context for those that don't know that much about it, if you're in boxing and you've got lightweights and featherweights and medium weights you know and, and heavyweights here in surfing you've got all the different weights and all the different <laughs> types of personalities and characters and sizes and shapes but they're all in the water together and both of these guys as Kanoa Igarashi misses an incredible wow. opportunity right there disappointment had the right idea was looking for the tube and we saw Felipe Toledo get a great barrel and we'll see it on the replay soon but here in surfing regardless of the size or the weight they're all in the water together at the same time and these two guys would be considered you know and it's not a derogatory term but a lightweight in terms of their size and the power that they have but when they're on a wave the power that they display for what they've physically got is incredible trying to hold on to the inside rail there button if he managed to do so it was that uh, tube time unfortunately just couldn't quite hold on to that one on the outside here's a replay up to Lado's wave straight into that barrel tags this one big strong solid closeout floater for the defending champion. And here he is on the replay. Double drag from those front arms and then he finishes strong. Standing by for those scores. Six point ride for the opener of Igarashi. And here goes that, that replay. Drives down, pumps off the bottom, snaps out of the top. Quick, fast snap because he sees this section. Doesn't really manage to get too much cover there, which is unfortunate. And then pumps along, throws to the air. Great spin. Beautifully clean conversion. Well done, Kanoa. We thought that was an incredible start for him. Six-point ride, and it was an incredible start. But Felipe Toledo looks like he's going to trump him. Yeah, there it is. It's a 6.83 for Toledo. Early advantage uh, in this bout between Igarashi and Brazil. I would have thought that there might have been a little more spread there, quite honestly. I feel like Kanoa's wave was amazing, but it was a little bit smaller. The tube time was quite small, and, and almost like that tube middle run was didn't really add much to the score. And then the nice you know spin at the end to, to complete. Um, I felt like Felipe's was a bigger wave. The barrel time was way you know, was significant. It was a proper good tube. And then into that critical big floater, and I thought as a two-turn combo, that could be a very good score. Well, it is a good one here. Look at uh, the uh, scale. You've got Igarashi yeah. sitting in that good range, and then uh, the judges deeming that uh, Felipe's was in the very good range. Yeah, and I suppose it is early days in the heat too, and you don't want to go too far with those scores. But a 6.83 for Felipe getting the advantage. Um, I feel like it could have been tight in, in a small way. 0.5 here, you know, a little more significant perhaps. And look at the view, it's, it's a, such a picturesque sight. Great waves, great people, great food. A lot to like about this area of Rio Saquarema.
And uh, look at the, the rock. You can see in that shot how the, the, the waves, you see there's a little side chop coming from that rock platform. You can see in the background behind all of the boulders, there's this flat rock platform that the water washes up, it surges across, and then it dumps into the river mouth, and it all starts moving sideways across through the ocean. And, and that's where we get the peaky nature over here on the sandbar, and we start to get them right-hand points just peeling along. Uh, great conditions, a great location, and a lot to like about Rio. The thing that I've enjoyed too, Brad, is how we've heard um, everybody that's come in, whether they're from Brazil or not, has appreciated the crowd support for them, which is a really, really nice thing that they are in that position where they're able to support everyone, not just their own countrymen. And it shows too that they're a knowledgeable crowd. You know, they love yes. the sport of surfing, they appreciate good surfing, they appreciate good rivalries, and that makes uh, the spectacle even better for all of us fans. Exactly, mate, exactly. And we feel it, they feel it. The best surfers in the world feel it. And um, now, I under having come here for the first time, now I understand uh, why that move to Sakwarema was made and why it's so popular with the surfers. 22 minutes remaining in this one. It is Felipe Toledo, the defending champion, coming to into this event, uh, rated number six on the Jeep leaderboard, up against uh, Kanoa Igarashi, who has had his best start to his championship tour career. He's uh, ranked number four, coming off a big win. Uh, his maiden victory in Bali. That was a special moment for uh, the surfer representing Japan. Yeah, for the surfing world to see Japan break through for a CT victory, first ever. And having that representation for those nations, be it, you know, he with Japan or Leonardo with Italy, there's some, some great things going on internationally for surfing. Of course, uh, Kano, uh, born in Japan, uh, moved to California early on uh, in his life uh, to uh, give himself uh, the best shot of becoming a pro surfer. And it has paid dividends as uh, he qualified uh, in uh, 2016. And uh, he's had a couple of runner-ups at backdoor. He's a double qualifier uh, through uh, his career. And uh, someone who needs no double qualification. Uh, she's a seven times world champion. She's a defending champion of this event. She's found herself a place in the semifinals. She's on the sidelines now with Peter Mel. Yeah, thank you, uh, Stephanie. Good win there. You've been making it to the quarterfinals. You have one win this season, but the quarterfinals have been a bit of an Achilles, so getting through that one, so it was nice. Yeah, Courtney's such a tough opponent um, in any conditions. And then, you know, watching the surf out here yesterday and then thinking about my heat with Courtney, I was like, oh, she loves like big tubes and she's unafraid to just. You know, try airs and stuff like that. So um, I just knew if I could surf a really smart heat, and you know, it's maybe that's sort of wasting a few actual surfing opportunities. But if I could just eliminate opportunities for her and stay on my game, then uh, it should be pretty good. My actual surfing was a little wobbly and stuff, but um, but yeah, it's it's really nice to get into the semis. So. 21 times you surfed against Chris Moore. What's it gonna do? Yeah. 13 to 9, 22 times, doing my bad math. But uh, another matchup, right? So what's going to take to beat Carissa today? Who's got the wins? 13, she's Carissa. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this is a tough one again. Again, yeah, Carissa and I, we love sand bottom right hand point breaks. It's kind of our, our jam, both of us. So um, yeah, I'm sure she's got the flair. Hopefully I can again play a really smart heat and, and um, out smarter, but yeah, I'm gonna have to do some some really good surfing too. So yeah, damn, I didn't know. Can't wait for it. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. <laughs> Back up to you guys. I think Peter Mel's just given uh, Stephanie Gilmore some extra motivation coming into the uh, semi-finals, dropping a bomb off some stats on her. Yeah, <laughs> you see her go. Who's got the head-to-head? <laughs> -head? I mean, maybe the perfect answer was I don't care, <laughs> but she bit onto that one, and, and it was of interest. And obviously, the fact that she was behind almost surprised her. And as you said, may uh, maybe that extra little <laughs> bit of motivation. 19 minutes remaining in the uh, first quarterfinal on the men's side of the uh, draw. Toledo, number 77, number six in the world, a ninth on the Gold Coast, second in uh, Bells Beach, quarterfinal at uh, Bali, and then uh, 17th place at Margaret River. He's obviously the defending champion here, the defending champion at the next event too, the uh, Corona J Bay Open. He's from uh, Ubatuba, Sao Paulo, and obviously spends a lot of time over in San Clemente, California, working with uh, Marcia Suvi on those boards. I've seen uh, Felipe paddle out with an interesting little swallowtail many times in these little right-hand barrels. It's got a little uh, channel off the, uh, the base of the, uh, the swallows, and uh, according to Suvi, uh, he uses that a lot in barreling right-handing waves. 
I suppose those channels give you some grip on the wave face, don't they? They obviously channel water and give direction and speed that way, but you also, through the, the edge in the channel, you get some grip and some hold in, in the tube. And uh, that has been, you know, tube riding is one of the things. Obviously, the aerial approach of these guys has taken surfing to a level that was unimaginable, for my mind. Um, and then, but then you look at the tube riding that these guys do and how deep and how late they take off and ride. It's, it's incredible. These guys are matched up in uh, 2017. It was a heated battle. There was an interference call. And uh, it was uh, Igarashi who got the knife with that uh, interference call. A little bit of heated situation over there. Felipe was at a stage in his career where he was still learning how to bottle up and use those emotions. Oh, how was that turn <laughs> just quietly into the air? And uh, both these guys, hot, tempered, fiery individuals. He restrained, uh, I believe he did get a fine at this event. And of course, uh, it's a very different Felipe Toledo that we see in 2019. He's learned how to contain that emotional and channel it in the right way. He's a mature surfer, and yeah, he is the defending champion over here. We will see an aerial in the seat. I'm going to put it out there. And yeah, that's a good Can't one. Can't wait like, to see yeah, it. I, I'm with you on that. But uh, you know, interesting to see when you're a young man and, and you've got so much desire and things don't go your way, and you've got your in, your impersonation of that particular situation or what went down, and. Um, things over, you know, boil up. We've all had those situations because it's a, it's such a tough place to live in the, in the public eye. And, and as a competitor, you put yourself out there every heat, every week. It's a real strong thing. And so for, for me to see those, those scenes of Felipe as a young man, just getting, you know, hot under the collar and wanting to get in there and talk to the judges, this, it's just signs of how much he cares and how much he, he, he needs and wants those wins. I remember seeing him as a young man at Sunset Point, very young Felipe Toledo, 12, 13 years old. And, and it was only small Sunset Point, but he was you know, such a great surfer. And I, I remember saying to him, mate, keep that up. One day you could be a world champion. As we look at these deep stats, 3-1 in favor of Igarashi. When you look at the average heat scores, a significant advantage there to Toledo. A couple of points, solid two and a half points there. Maximum heat scores, another advantage there to Felipe. And the maximum wave score, well, look at it, out of 10 points for uh, Philippe Toledo. He is, uh, he's an incredible surfer. And, and I suppose both these guys, there's similarities in their approaches. They're both super fast, super fast twitch. The way they approach a wave is always, you know, 100% fully at it, going at it as fast as they can. And then in their turns, there's a, a, I always use this word, sear, because to me, when the rail drives through the water and you get that clean line driving through the water, it sears through the water. That to me is great surfing. And, and both of these guys have that in their approach. See a little set approaching the rocks there, right in the corner. Kanoa, he's interested. He's got the priority. That's why Felipe, you can see him sitting inside a little bit and over a little bit so that Kanoa has to make those decisions first and that allows Felipe time to make a decision as to whether he's going to go that wave or not. And it's the perfect place to be when you don't have priority. Opens up the opportunities for Mother Nature to influence and bring something your way. Fourteen thirty on the clock. One ride of consequence for both people. Six eight three for Felipe and a six for Kanoa. Fourteen and a half minutes remaining in this one. It was a quick start earlier on, and now we're waiting on Toledo to lock in his wave number two. Fourteen minutes remaining. Felipe Toledo, of course, uh, his dad uh, Ricardo, two times national champion for Brazil. Ricardinho to surf in speedos. That's one of the things I remember. I remember <laughs> seeing this guy in speedos and going, who's that guy? Here we go. Look at uh, Toledo having a look at this one. It's a smaller inside wave. He's got speed to burn. Big frontside hack to start off with. Up and over that section. He does well to get the second turn in. 
We talk about those fast test fibers and that training, that's when it comes into good use. That was exactly it, wasn't it? Um, it came out of the top and then I don't think anybody can do those connections from one into the next as quickly as we watched the replay. A few little pumps, drives it, nice cut and gets that. What he, what he did was he got that drift of the tail which kind of sent him back a little further than he might have wanted to and all of a sudden he had to really react quickly to get up on top of that white water and get the second turn in um, and completed it easy as Felipe Toledo does. Toledo was in that uh, world title conversation all the way through to the uh, final event of the year, the Billabong Pro Pipeline Masters. Ended up uh, number three in the world on the Jeep Leaders, Jeep Leaders rankings. At the end of last year, that was his best result. Or his best ranking, should I say. And uh, looking uh, to take another one home for Brazil. He's a super popular surfer anywhere he goes around the world. Thinking back to that double alley oop at J Bay, oh. uh, it's still uh, it's burnt into my memory forever. That one. And the one we keep seeing from the here he's up and riding again, Brad. Quick little in and out, and the backhand 540 that we keep seeing in the play ons and stuff. Yep. To me, that the distance covered, the speed. That was one of the the greatest surfing maneuvers I have ever seen. And a 417. So obviously Kanoa's out the back with priority. He's sitting there with that priority. He's, and so Felipe's taking advantage of having second priority by just trying to create something while he doesn't have the advantage of priority. And he did a pretty good job getting that four. It adds some pressure to Felipe. I mean, to, to Kanoa. And it, it, it's not something that Felipe will want to keep. But in the end, he's, he's keeping moving. He's surfing. And he's trying to take some advantage while Kanoa waits and put some more pressure on him. Coming up next is going to be uh, the second quarter final, Federico Marais and Julian Wilson, but this is Felipe, another quick in and out, just uh, hunting under that priority. Welcome back to sunny Sakurama, stop number five on the championship tour. It's finals day here at Barinha. It is the backup venue, the rifling right-handers down on the uh, sand spit on the other end of the beach. You've joined us just in time for quarterfinal number two, or number one rather, between uh, Felipe Toledo and Kanawa Igarashi. Brad Brickle here alongside Barton Lynch for the call. And these guys looking to uh, edge towards that uh, big final matchup later on this afternoon. We should see finals uh, all the way through around uh, after lunchtime today, Barton. Yeah, it's going to be very exciting. And if the crowds, the crowds that we've had every other day this week are anything to go by, um, get ready and hold on to your hat because the excitement here, I, I hope we can do a good enough job of relaying to the world and to our fans and public out there of how, how exciting it is and what it actually is like to be here in and amongst all of this energy because it's next level. 501 is the requirement for uh, Kanoa Igarashi. He's holding on to that priority. These guys have had some history in the past. Uh, they do share the same uh, surfboard shaper. Both riding sharp eye surfboards shaped by Masia Suvi. Nine minutes 25 on the clock. We had a big start to this heat. The first two waves are the ones that are still counting. It was that Toledo who had the uh, slight advantage, 0.83 over that uh, first exchange. Nine minutes remaining in this one. Beautiful sunny day. It's a Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning here, local time, five to nine. We had an early start here at Sakurama today. 6.35 this morning. And uh, we'll finish around 1.30 this afternoon. Really looking forward to a big finals day here for the OI Rio Pro. Thanks for watching on Fox Sports. Eight and a half minutes remaining in quarterfinal number one between Felipe Toledo, the defending champion up against Kanawa Igarashi. Already got one win on the championship tour this year. Of course, this is top number five on that championship tour. Here goes Igarashi. He's nice and deep in this section. He's traveling. He just couldn't find the exit there, but no, yeah. he's looking for that little doggy door, that little flap in the door to get out. And it just sped up, didn't it? It looked at first, it was a good size set wave and he waited a long time with priority. Um, Felipe Toledo is going to be very happy that Kanoa waited that amount of time, spent that amount of time, eight minutes on the clock left now. 
the advantage, two scores in the bank, so to speak, for Philippe Toledo and the priority as we see him up driving, pumping in the tube. But there it just got a little, oh, he was still right there, wasn't he? But it was going to close out down the line, gave himself every opportunity of making it, tried his very best, but didn't quite get out and for Felipe Toledo to get the priority and uh, have nothing scored against him is a great situation. That's a win for Felipe. Seven and a half minutes remaining in this one. We are standing by for those uh, scores to drop in. It's not going to be the 5-0-1 he requires. And we'll wait for uh, a bit more action at the, at the back. We've got plenty of action uh, in the competitors area. Peter Mel has got a, uh, a surfboard. He loves surfboard design, and we love hearing from him. Peter Mel, what you got? Well, you talked about how similar these surfers are, not only in ability and talent, but also in their surfboards. And this is uh, Kanoa's backup board here. He's on his original Bali board, which is an exact duplicate of what we have here, which is 5'11", 18 and 5'8", 2 and 3'8". Uh, it says in its team, you had touched on the fact that you know, he had made the switch looking at Felipe surfing, saying, oh, it's kind of similar. I think I'm going to try his board designs. I mean, he's actually riding his FCS2 fins, the Felipe Toledo model. So he's out there using some of the equipment. It's how it works around here, though. I mean, you have the best equipment. Sometimes you're going to have uh, boards and, and similar styles and approaches. So Kanoa on his Bali winning board out there against Felipe Toledo. But, uh, you know, Felipe, it's going to be a fun one to finish out. Hey, Pete, one of the things Yo. that I always feel like it brings speed is the edge at the tail and, and then uh -huh. that, that, that profile of the rail shape. What is the yeah. rail like back there and how, how much edge has he got on those boards? Because they're both so fast. Yeah, really. And, and I think the biggest thing that they bring to the table is the, the fact that they can go through the turn, right, with yeah. so much speed and, and so much control. And I think that the reason being is that they tuck the edge here quite a bit, right? So all the way back almost to the fin, they're giving that. And that creates grip when you have a rolled rail like that. Now, one thing that they do add to this to keep the speed going, because as soon as you roll the rail so much, you start to sacrifice speed and drive. Yeah. You put edge, and there's a really sharp edge. Matter of fact, I could butter my toast with this. It's that sharp. So <laughs> we, we there's could, uh, some secrets into it. Yeah, we could see that edge on, on camera as well. Yeah, so these guys are super fast, and so they've got that little wrapped under edge so that they've got some hold on the rail, and then that edge extending just up to, to get the that, speed. Pardon. Yes, mate. Yeah, just to add to that part, I mean, the, the lightness of it, too, um, and, and, you know, Zuby, and then he talked about the sander, right, which yeah. is not yeah. the shaper. The shaper shapes this foam, and then there's a sander who comes in and actually finishes it out there, and he's just as important to put that that knife blade on there. Oh, a, a, a sander can make a breaker board, right? Yeah, absolutely, right? Yeah. I mean, it matter make or break in a literal sense because you yeah. sand too much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, your strength's gone. Yeah. Thank you, Pete. We love the insights uh, down there. We'll check in with you a little bit later on this morning. Five minutes remaining in this uh, big clash. The first quarter final between Felipe Toledo, defending champion here at the Oibrio Pro. He also won this event back in 2015. And uh, it is Kanoa Igarashi with a bit of work to do uh, with a 5-0-1 requirement. Jake Patterson, of course, uh, Snake Tails, the former championship tour competitor, coaching Kanoa Igarashi. What's he saying to him now, if you can talk to him? Well, he's a crafty little critter. <laughs> Snake is Jake Patterson. And... Uh great competitor and that's what it takes the, the interesting thing he also works with stephanie gilmore and we heard her twice say in, in her post heat interview surf smart surf smart here's the recap kanoa igarashi on the opening ride beautiful little one looked like the surf ranch just there peeling along the inside into a beautiful air reverse great little starter and a six point ride for kanoa it there. was a confidence builder but again he wasn't gonna he hasn't had much since that point but here's Felipe's beautiful barrel on the outside. Here we go. Look at this angle. Deep, nice tube right, and into a big floating re-entry here to finish up. Another little inside wave. This is the 417. Snaps out of the top. Gets the drift in the tail instantly and immediately. Karate chops that lip. Throws the board back up. Gets Maybe it as high as he can. And somehow he uh, got that second turn in. Great speed and reflexes from Felipe Toledo. Kanoa Igarashi having a look at one paddling around. And I feel like that the, I've seen Kanoa paddling in and around Felipe quite a bit. You can see Felipe sort of moving in towards Kanoa. And by being active like that and continually moving and hunting, it kind of, it's like you're throwing bait. It's like you're fishing and you're burling up the water and to get the fish to take interest. When you start moving and paddling and your opponent is watching and he starts wondering and wanting to kind of stop you, then you've got that opportunity to sell him a lemon until you've got him on the line and you've got that opportunity for you.
got him biting and interested in you and he's just paying attention to himself, he ain't going to bite. And so, <laughs> so sometimes you've got to make some moves and some positioning to get them on the line and it feels like that's what Kanoa's been doing out there. So much more than uh, meets the eye watching uh, from afar. It's not just about riding waves uh, inside these 30 minute heats and you can see the strategy now starting to, to uh, play off against each other. And you can see Kanoa's moving all the time and it, it's forcing Felipe to move because he doesn't want to give him that space. See, Kanoa goes one way, Felipe follows. Kanoa stops, moves back, Felipe stops. He gets back to him and so there's this cat and mouse game going on now which in a lot of ways sometimes with two minutes, 20, you know, 20 on the clock, geez, that went fast, the back end. Um, Felipe's obvious agenda here, he doesn't need to ride a wave. He just make, needs to make sure that Kanoa doesn't ride a wave. And what Kanoa does ride, if he does ride one, isn't enough to give him what he needs, the 5.01, which he could get with his eyes closed. And the two of them have got to be uh, very careful. They have had an interference in this event uh, in the past 2017. We saw yes. that a bit earlier in the, uh, in the heat. And uh, they've got to watch out. They can't get tangled up. And uh, no one wants interference uh, at this stage of the heat. Two minutes remaining. Defending champion uh, looking like he may be booking himself a place in that uh, semi-final, getting one place uh, closer to potentially defending this title and going three times. Uh, if he wins three times, he will match Dave McCauley, who, yeah. is, uh, he, who is, uh, has the, uh, the most titles here as a, a winner in Brazil. And it'd be fair to say that you feel like in the career of Felipe Toledo, he will do that one more time. If, yes. it's, not, if it's not today, it's going to happen another day for sure. He's got plenty of time on his hands. Uh, the Rookie of the Year back in uh, 2013. Here we go. It's a strong paddle. Kanoa takes off right over the rocks. And of course, uh, Toledo with the uh, priority. He's able to call him off that wave. And he's going to get back out the back potentially and get the priority right back. So that will be quite an incredible block. Uh, to block to reclaim of the priority from the Felipe Felipe. Yeah, from the yeah. defending champion and uh, you can see the shot there they're right up against the rocks in the corner a minute to go Toledo just uh, looking over his shoulder trying to make sure uh, he gets a read on how close Kanoa is to him but it looks like the judges because Kanoa had ridden the last wave oh, it seems like they've given the priority to Kanoa thinking that Felipe used his wow. priority rode a wave and, um, and Kanoa but Kanoa had ridden that wave as well so that's a little bit of a gray area to me. Felipe was back out the back and, and in reality he had sort of claimed that line up before Kanoa had got there. Judges deeming I suppose that because Kanoa, well it's quite an opportunity isn't it well, to it give is him now. that priority if he gets a ride turns the heat right in this back end. That's, uh, that's a fantastic situation and a great save from Kanoa Igarashi. Well time is the enemy now for Igarashi unfortunately 14 seconds remaining he needs to find something for the 5-0-1 otherwise it will be Felipe Toledo marching on for Brazil here at the Oi Rio Pro. Looks like he's declared. He looked over to Felipe and went on the mate. Well done. No opportunity there. The crowd likes it. Uh, they are going to be filling in all day. Stadium-like atmosphere here yesterday. We expect more here for finals day. Felipe Toledo booking himself a place in the semifinals. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.